Well, praise the Lord, Michael Jakes here, and we're here once again with the Sunday Sermon Series. We pray that all is well with you once again as we do open up the Word of God. Today, today we are continuing our message that we began last week entitled, A Season of Suddenlies. And we're looking into the life of Job, and we're looking at uh, the, the terrible circumstances that befell him. Uh, and and we learn much from Job's story uh, because many times Job's story is our story. <clears throat> you may have you may not have undergone all the things that Job has undergone, but Job's story truly is our story because Job was living in a season of suddenlies, the season of the unexpected, and we all have unexpected things that do take place and turn up in our lives. How will we respond to those times? Amen. Job tells us exactly how that is done. Amen. So once again, we thank you for joining us. Uh, we pray that your time spent in God's word today will be a fruitful one indeed. We ask that if you are watching us over Facebook right now, that you'll share this page out, that others also may be blessed. We're also streaming right now live over YouTube, Spreaker.com, and on Twitter. Amen. And so we welcome you all in. Thank you for joining us. <clears throat> we're going to pray, and we're going to get right into this word for today. Amen. Lord, we bless your name. We honor you. We thank you once again. Lord, you've given us this opportunity to open up your word. Lord, we pray that for the next few minutes, Lord, that you might be the silent listener to all that we do and say. Lord, we ask for clarity of mind, of heart, of spirit. Uh, Lord, we pray that uh, no flesh will be glorified in your presence. Lord, we want your will to be done. We want your word to be spoken. Lord, we're not looking to man. Lord, we look to you, the author and finisher of our faith. So, Lord, have your way. We love you. We thank you. And we praise you. And we pray in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen and amen. Well, hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good. God is good. God is on the throne. We, Once again, we honor him uh, and we bless him. Now, if you were with us last week, we were speaking, but we began speaking about Job, and we read, we read at length uh, Job's plight, and how one after another things began to happen to Job. If I could just go back to chapter one, uh, just for a couple of minutes, uh, in Job chapter number one and verse number thirteen, it talks about a day uh, when his sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in the midst of their brother's house, and I'm going to summarize. In verse number 14, a, a, a messenger came uh, and tells them that the oxen were plowing uh, and the asses were feeding beside them and the Sabaeans fell upon them. And, and there was great tragedy there. In verse number 16, it says, while he was yet speaking. And that is an indication of something that suddenly happens. Uh, while he was yet speaking, <clears throat> someone else came in and said, the fire of God has fallen from heaven and, and has burned up your sheep and your servants and consumed them. And the man says, only me has escaped to tell you what has happened. And while he was yet speaking, the Bible says here uh, that someone else has come, comes in and says that the Chaldeans uh, made out of three bands, uh, made out three bands and fell upon the camels and have carried them away <clears throat> and slain the servants with the edge of the sword. And he is the only one that escaped. And while he was yet speaking, in verse number 18, uh, there came also another and said, Thy sons and thy daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house and it fell upon the young men and they are dead and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. Calamity falls upon Job in the space of probably only a few minutes. Now Job doesn't know the backstory. We know the backstory. Job doesn't know the backstory. The backstory is uh, that up in the portals of heaven, there was a conversation. There was a conversation between God himself and Satan himself. There was a conversation, and Job was the topic of conversation. And it was God who broached the subject. Have you seen my servant Job? Job was a righteous man. Job was a good man. Job was a blessed man. And Satan had a problem with this. Of course he's blessed because you protect him. You have put your hedge of protection around him. Uh, but if you take all he has, he will curse you to your face. And so Job, <clears throat> and so Job is here. And all of these things uh befall Job, but here's what God told here's what God told Satan. Here's exactly what God told Satan. Behold, all that he has is in your power, only upon himself put not forth thine hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. And so we see that all of these things that happened to Job were precipitated they were precipitated through a conversation between God and Satan. And because God gave him permission. Why would God give Satan such permission? 
Once again, it's all wrapped up in the mind of God. But God gave uh, this uh, gave Satan this permission because God knew his servant Job. That's what broke the conversation. Have you seen my servant Job? God knew exactly who Job was. God knew exactly what Job was about. And so he he puts Job in the hands of Satan, it, it, so to speak. Understand what I mean? God is sovereign. And God was holding and God was holding Job and Job and God was in complete control of every single facet of every single thing that would happen to Job. God was in control. Satan was not in control. Now Satan takes it upon himself to do what he can because God says, "Go." God gave him the go ahead. And so he's going to take all he can to do all he can. But once again, God knew Job. God knew Job. And when you and I find ourselves in such circumstances that come unexpectedly, that sweep across our life, and we don't know where it came from or, or how it's happening or why it's happening, God knows us. And as we said, every single thing, Every single thing that has happened to you or I, every single thing that will go on and go down in your life, any unexpected act, any piece of turmoil, any trial, any test, anything that happens to you that we look at and consider negative or bad, it has already passed through the hands of God and he has inspected it, he has touched it, and he has said yes, because he knows us. He knows us. Satan means it for evil. God means it for good. Of course, that's from Genesis chapter number 50. God means it for good. Satan means it for evil. God knows you and I. And everything that happens to Job here in chapter number one, uh, the Bible says here in verse number 20, then Job arose and rent his mantle, and shaved his head, and fell down upon the ground, and worshipped. And he worshipped. And once again, this confuses the enemy. This confounds the enemy. The enemy does not understand how this can happen. The enemy doesn't understand how these types of things can come down upon an individual, and they can yet rise up and worship. That is far from his understanding. But that's exactly what Job does. And the Bible says, "Naked." Job said, Naked came out, out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And the Bible says that Job did not sin at all. Yet, Job was crushed. Job was broken. Job was aching. Pain. He had lost his family in one fell swoop. Job was numb, and yet, in the recesses of his spirit, he knew that God was God and that God was in control. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And the Bible says once again, he did not sin with his lips. Here's what we said last time, before we move on, here's what we said, that God's suddenlies, God's suddenlies originate in heaven. They originate in heaven. They have his fingerprints. Those suddenlies, those unexpected uh, events that happen in our lives that take us by surprise, they have God's fingerprints all over it. I don't care how evil you may think it is, how evil that it seems to be, how evil it may be. And I'm not trying to explain calamity. I, I am unable to explain tragedy and calamity. I am unable to explain it all. But all I know is that whatever happens, this is the rule that we must go by. That every single thing that happens to us in our lives is either caused by God or allowed by God. God is sovereign. And those may be hard words to take when you're in the midst of, of what you're going through. That what is going on in your life right now is caused by God or allowed by God. That's the only alternatives. That's it. That's all it could be. But God, ultimately, 
is sovereign and he is in absolute control. We said that God's suddenlies, they come and they interrupt our lives. God's suddenlies come, they interrupt our lives, and they can change the course of your life. A suddenly, a suddenly from God can change the course of your life. Most definitely. Change the course of your life. I think back to my, I, I think of, I think of my mom. I think of my own mother here right now. Uh, my mother says, my mother said, my, well, my mother and her brother, they were, they were uh, years ago, years and years, I'm talking years ago now because my mother's been saved for almost as long as I have. Uh, my mother and her brother, they were drinking buddies. Every weekend, they just they, they were just drinking buddies. Everybody, if you want to know where my mother was, want to know where my brother was, they were together. They were just out somewhere, just just having a good time, just doing what what unsaved people do. And and when he passed away, when her brother passed away, my mother says that she was empty. She was alone. She was by herself. And it was only a matter of time. It was it was and it was the death of her brother that began her coming to church. It was the death of her brother that began her accepting our invitation to come to church, myself and my sister, come to church. And it was the death of her brother that was the uh, uh, that was the, the beginning point of her giving her life to the Lord. Within a within a few months, maybe within a, maybe a year, she was saved. She was saved. And so once again, uh Things happen in our life that somehow change the course of our of our lives. The death of a loved one can change the course of your life. At least that's what happened in that case, and it's happened probably many times over to many other people. But these are the things that can happen. Uh, God suddenly is what we need to remember as we go through what we go through. We mentioned last time, God's suddenlies are filled with his power, his grace, as we shall see, his mercy, and his love. God's suddenlies are power packed, grace packed, mercy packed, love packed. His suddenlies, they're all available in the midst of what you're going through. Amen. That's so important. Now we go to chapter number two. Chapter number two. And we see the scene is very similar. And we're going to read here. Uh, starting in verse number one. Again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. Same type of scene. And the Lord said unto Satan, from whence comest thou? And Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, hast thou considered my servant Job? Now this is, uh, this is after whatever has happened to Job has happened. The Bible doesn't give us a timeline here. We don't know. We don't know how long, how much time has passed here. We don't know if this is the next day, the next, the next month, the next hour, the next year, the next couple of years, the next couple of months. We don't know how much time has transpired between those suddenlies that happened in chapter chapter one, between what is about to happen now. The Bible just doesn't tell us. But the Lord said unto Satan, "Hast thou considered my servant Job?" that there is none like him in the earth, and perfect and an upright man, uh, one that feareth God and escheweth evil. And still, and notice what God says, sort of digs, and still he holdeth fast his integrity. Although, now here's what, listen to what God said. Many have had a problem with what God says here. And still he holds fast his integrity, Although thou moves me against him to destroy him without cause. Many have tried to say that Satan sort of talked God into doing what he did. Uh, many have said that Satan sort of deceived God. Uh, many have tried to say that uh, uh, Satan sort of used some sort of psychology on God to try to get him to do something that he wanted him to do. No such a thing. No such a thing. Remember, God knew Job. God knew Job. And notice what God says. This man still maintains his integrity. 
What happened, happened. But the man still stands in spite of it all. In spite of it all. He says, thou moves me against him. He, he, here's what we know what happened to Job. And what is going to yet happen to Job, okay? And once again, many people have, many have problems with this. And once again, I'm not going to be the one to try to explain God's modes, means, and methods. Far beyond me. His ways are far above my ways. I, I, I would not understand it if I tried. But we have insight. We have insight into his heart. We know that he loves. We know that he's a God, the God of all grace. We know that he is the God of all mercy. We, we, we know these things. And so he doesn't do anything uh, haphazardly with our own good in mind. That's what we have to keep in mind. God is not trying to, to rip and tear Job apart because he can. No, 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 no. What we have to understand is God always has our greater good in his heart. Always has our greater good. Now, once again, how God goes about bringing about our good, our greater good, it's far beyond our means to fully understand at all times. You are not going to fully understand. But once again, God here, uh, he was not provoked at all. He was not finagled. He was not uh, deceived. Nobody, he was not tricked into doing what he did he was not tricked into allowing satan to quote have his way with satan with, with, with job god was in complete control of this whole situation what happened to job number one it was unexpected number two what happened to job was unprovoked and number three what happened to job was undeserved undeserved in, once again when we talk about the fact that it was undeserved someone once said to me someone once said to me oh, rather i heard someone say once before and i've carried this with me why someone said why is this all of this happening to me why is all of this going on in my life why have i had so much loss why have i had so much pain why has god allowed all of these things into my life and the answer was simply why not you why not you? Why not you? Why wouldn't God choose you to show his glory through? Why not God? Why wouldn't God uh, use you to magnify his grace and his mercy and his love? Why not you? Why not Job? Amen? Why not Job? Job was about to be blessed. Job was about to be blessed. But, in verse number 4, uh, Job 2 and 4, And Satan answered the Lord, Skin for skin, yea, all that a man hath, he will give. All that a man hath, he will give his life. In other words, a man will give up anything to save his life. He'll give up anything to save his life. But, Satan says, Put forth thine hand now. And notice, Notice he, he, he tells God to do it. Because even Satan knows that God is sovereign. Even though God gives, uh, even though God gives the, uh, says, go ahead. Satan knows that it's God that has to give the go ahead. He says, but put forth thine hand now and touch his bone and his flesh. And he will curse thee to thy face. He going to curse you to your face. Before you told me, before you told me, don't touch him. And I didn't. But the wind and, and the Chaldeans and, and, and all of the, the Sabaeans, they all, they made a wreck out of Job's life. I didn't touch his, I didn't touch his body. Because you said not to. But now he says, God, you touch his bone, you touch his flesh. And this man, for sure, he is going to curse you to your face. And the Lord said unto Satan, and I love I love this verse because it, it, it drives home a point. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, he is in thine hand. And here it is. Here, here, here's the stipulation. 
Here's the caveat. Here's the line in the sand that Satan cannot cross but save his life. <laughs> Satan has limitations in your life and in my life. There are certain things that Satan cannot do. Why? Because God said so. We mentioned before, may, maybe maybe you've told your child when they were young a time or two, uh, uh, don't do something and don't do this and don't do that. And maybe, maybe they've answered back and said, why, why, why? And, and, and maybe some don't some don't discipline this way, but but maybe some have. And so and, and sometimes the answer that you give back to a child or someone who says why they have to do this, and you, you simply say, because I said so. It's that simple. Because I said so. Because I can. Because I have the authority. Because I said so. And that is the reason. That is the reason why Satan cannot go over what God said. That is why Satan cannot even disobey God. We're talking, we, we're talking about an evil devil. We're talking about an evil, wicked, despicable, corrupted devil that has to obey God. No matter what, there's never been a day where Satan went haywire and he rebelled. Once again, we know that Satan is, is his whole existence is rebellion. We understand that. That's how, that's how he became who he is. But when God says to do something, Satan doesn't have a choice. He can't say, God, I'm not doing that. I don't want to do that. Satan can't say it. Satan, God says rather, save his life. And those were his, those were his uh, uh, walking orders. He's in your hands. Touch his bone, touch his flesh, but don't kill him. And no matter what happened to Job, Job was not going to die. He was not going to die. Because God did not give Satan permission to kill him. Okay? Okay? And that's what we must understand. When we go through what we go through, there are limitations on what can happen. There are limitations on how much you can take. Listen, God will not allow you to take, to deal with. What you can deal with may not be what I can deal with. God will not allow you to Take more than you can bear. If you had to deal with what I've had to deal with, it may crush you. If I had to deal with what you have, have had to deal with, it may crush me. God knows our limitations. They are fixed. He knows us. Remember, that's what we're talking. He knows us. He knew that Job could handle this. He knew. He knows that you can handle what you're dealing with. Though the questions may be circling your mind and you may be scratching your head, he knows that you can deal with what is taking place right now in your life. He knows. So Satan went, in verse number 7, Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord and smote Job. Remember, this is with God's permission. God, Satan told Satan, Satan rather, Satan told God, put forth your hand now. What Satan was saying is, give me permission now. Give me permission to do this. And now Satan comes and he smote, smites Job with sore boils from the sole of his foot unto his crown. What does this tell us? That Satan does indeed have the power to put sickness on an individual. We know that. We live in this fallen world. And sickness is here. We have diseases here. We have germs. We, but Satan, the, the natural natural things that can happen to, to, to any one of us. But Satan, sometimes things that happen to us on a physical level or a mental level. They're spiritual. 
They are spiritually induced. And here, what happens to Job here is spiritual. Oh, the, the revelation of it is physical. But this is a spiritual thing that's happening to Job right now. Okay? This was born in the heavenlies. And he is dealing with it now. The Bible says here that he, he smote Job with these sore boils from the sole of his foot unto his crown. And he took a pot herd to scrape himself with all. And he sat down among the ashes. He takes a piece of broken pottery. And he begins to scrape these boils that came up on his skin. And he sits there in ashes. A sign of humility. And he just begins to scrape his skin. Then his wife. Now you're always going to have these types of individuals in your life when you're going through. You, you, you think that everybody is on your side when you're going through it. You think that everybody is with you. You think that everybody's pulling for you and, and let's go. You can do it. You, you think that everybody is like that? Everybody is not like that. Everybody is not on your side. Everybody is not pulling for you when you're going through what you're going through. They're waiting. They're standing back and they're seeing what you're going to do. Or, or somebody say, hey, come on, let's go, go do this. Forget all of that. You know, don't, let's go and drown your sorrows. Or let's go and get drunk. Let's go and get high. Let's go and do this. Let's go and do that. When you're going through, you, you need to forget. You need to forget. Some people will take you down that road. That's not the right road. Here's what his wife says. Dost thou still retain thine integrity? You still trying to be Mr. Goody Goody? You still trying to be Mr. Right and Mr. Righteous? You really, really do all of this? You're really, you're really still trying to hold up the light. She said, man, curse God and be dead. Come on. It's a wrap, Job. It's a wrap. You're done. Just curse God. This is not fair. This is not right. Curse God out so he could chop you down. No, no. Don't listen to people who try to pull you out of what, who try to who try to work on your spirit and try to get you uh, to move away uh, from the very thing that is going to bring blessing. Because here's, here, here's, here's what we have to understand. God does his best work. God does his best work in the dark. God does his best work in the dark. See, here's what happens. When we go through what we go through, and we're dealing with it, and we're struggling with it, and we're scratching our head, and we're frustrated, and we just don't know where to go and where to turn, and, and what's going on, what's going on. And, and Lord, and, and, and our prayer, our, our opening prayer, Lord, deliver me. Deliver me from this. And, and once again, a prayer of deliverance is nothing wrong with praying for deliverance. There's nothing wrong with asking God to alleviate whatever is going on in your life. Not, I don't find anything wrong with asking God for help. Lord, help me. Deliver me from what I'm doing. I don't find anything wrong in that. But that's the first place we go. Here's what we forget to do. While we are in the midst of asking God to deliver, 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 deliver. And this is something that I heard very recently. And, and it struck me, it, it hit me right in my head when I heard this. Instead of asking for deliverance, 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 Lord, develop, 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 develop. Lord, develop me. Lord, what are you trying to, what are you trying to teach me through this? What are you trying to bring out in my life? What are, me, what are you trying to show me about yourself? What are you trying to teach me about grace? Because the Bible says that grace is a teacher. Here's what we read. Uh, here's what we read uh, in. Here's what we read in in uh, the book of uh, Galatians, uh, chapter number uh, Titus, rather Titus chapter number two, Titus chapter number two, starting in verse uh, number eleven. It says, "For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that what teaching? What is teaching? Grace." Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, righteously, and godly in this present world. 
Grace teaches us some things. And so while you are in the midst, while you are in the midst of your groaning, while you are in the midst of your pain, while you are in the midst of your agony, Lord, develop me. Develop me. Help me to grow in the grace and knowledge of the Lord. Lord, I don't know. I don't understand. I don't get it. I just don't have the reasoning behind what's happening now in my life. But Lord, develop me. Don't allow me to come out of this empty. Don't allow me to come out of this bitter and angry. Lord, let me come out having learned something. Let me be developed in the midst of the fire, of the pain. Develop me. Don't let me just cry out for deliverance. Lord, I want you to develop me. Lord, develop me. Job says to his wife, in verse number 10, as I begin to, to, to come down, we'll come back to this next week. We're going to come right back here to Job next week. But she said unto, but he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God? And shall we not receive evil? In all this, Job did not sin with his lips. What does Job say here? Job is accepting what is happening to him. He is not rising up in rebellion. He is not rising up with his fist. To, with it, he is not rising up with his fist to the sky, and saying, "God, how could you? God, why me?" That's not what he's doing here. That's not what he's doing here. He is accepting what is happening to him. No, he doesn't understand. And once again, we don't have a timeline. We don't know. We don't. He's still dealing with what has already happened. Whether it was a week ago, a month ago, a day ago, a year ago, two years. He's still dealing with, he lost everything. He lost everything. And so Job is still dealing with what has happened to him previously. And here he is now. He says, we need to receive. I need to receive what is happening to me now. It is evil. It is. I don't understand it. Shall we accept good and not the evil? What, at least what we perceive as evil. He, he, here is what Job is, is saying. Here's what Job is saying. We don't understand what Job is doing. We don't understand. We don't understand the secret things of God. We don't understand the things. The things that we cannot explain. We, we, we just don't understand. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter number 29. And verse number 29. Here's, here's what we need to keep in our spirits. As we do. Deal with what we deal with. The secret things. Deuteronomy 29, 29. The secret things belong unto the Lord our God. Listen. There are some things. There are some matters that God is just not going to disclose or reveal to you or I. And we have to be satisfied with that. We cannot live our lives thinking about why God let this happen. And why did Lord. Why? Why? We cannot live our lives in that way. The secret things belong unto the Lord our God. But those things which are revealed belong to us and our children forever. Take what you learn. Take what he reveals. Take what you receive and run with it. Allow it to work. Allow it to work in your life. That we may do all the words of his law. What we do know, what we can understand, at least a modicum of what we can understand, take it and continue to live according to this word. Here's what it says once again. The things that are revealed belong to us and to our children forever that we may do all the words of this law. What he reveals to us, what he shows us, what we have, his grace, his mercy, his love, all, all of these things that we've been talking about. Take what we learn. Take what grace teaches us and allow it to mold us and shape us and help us to continue to live 
according to his word. Lord, help me to keep my eyes on you as I go through what I go through. Because everything in me is going to try and pull me away from it. Everything within me is trying to tell me, don't praise him. Don't worship. God is out to get you. Everything in you. Your flesh is crying out. What's going on? This is not fair. Why, why, why? Your flesh is crying out. Take and receive. Receive what the Lord is trying to bring about in your life. Because in the end, and once again, we're going we're gonna to get into this more next week. In the end, you are going to be blessed. You are going to be all the more blessed. Amen? So I, I pray that, that, that something that we have said today, something that we have said today, and once again, I, I'm saying it again, next week we're going we're gonna to dig a little bit deeper into Job's plight. And we're going to see, we're gonna see just, just how God can work and just how God can bless, even in the midst of the dark. Can you, can you grow in the dark? I've asked that question many times over the past several years that I've been here and, and not on here, but just, just in teaching and preaching. Can you grow in the dark? Will you allow the Lord to grow you in the dark? And by dark, I simply mean difficult circumstances, hardships. Uh, unexpected times, death in the family, dark times. Can you grow through it all? Will you allow the Lord to grow you? Will you allow the Lord to develop you as you're in the midst of your unexpected time, in the midst of your suddenly? Will you allow the Lord to develop you? Lord, we bless you today. We thank you once again. Lord, you've given us your word, Lord Jesus, and we, Lord Jesus, we are overwhelmed by your word. Lord, we pray that something spoken today from your word, Lord Jesus, might, might be of benefit to your children. Lord, we just want you to have your way. Lord, we know that we all have had our share of suddenlies. Lord, we know that there may be some more suddenlies uh, down the line that await us, Lord Jesus, but help us, uh, help us to remember that uh, you are never in a place where you are trying to crush us or beat us down or even to punish us, Lord Jesus. Lord, your intent is to grow us. Your intent is to develop us. Lord, your intent is, is to bring us to a place uh, where we can cry out to you and love you even more. And our faith even, Lord, our faith is intensified in the hard times. Lord, have your way in us, through us, with us. Lord, help us that we might continue to put our faith in you and nothing and no one else. Lord, have your way. We love you. We praise you. We honor you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good. God is good. God is on the throne. I have a comment from my brother Frank. It says, I grew spiritually through my mother's death. Absolutely, the Lord held me up uh, with his righteous right hand. No doubt. Uh, no doubt God is real. Absolutely. No doubt God is real. Once again, God will use, God will use circumstances in our lives to, to draw us and bring us to the place where he needs us to be, where he wants us to be. He, he will use the circumstances of our life. Amen. And once again, we won't always understand what God is doing, but in the end, you will be blessed. And that, that's, that's just the, the honest truth. You're going to be blessed in the end. Amen. So once again, we thank the Lord once again for giving us this opportunity if I can, let me invite you to join us. We'll be back here. Uh, Lord will we'll be back here tomorrow night. Uh, we're going to pick up. We're going to continue uh, with our line-by-line -line podcast. We'll be in 2 Corinthians chapter number 11. We're going to continue there. That'll be at 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Amen. Tuesday night, Tuesday night on our Hot Topic Tuesday, we are going to be broaching the subject of decreeing, declaring, and manifesting. Does the cross... Give me the authority to speak things into existence. A much talked about, uh, a much talked about thought and idea and notion. Does the cross give me the authority to call things out? 
uh, and, and call things as they were, uh, that are not as though they were? Does the cross give me that extra oomph to be able to do that? Well, we'll save out of all of that. We'll save that for Tuesday night. Join us if you can. That's 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We'll be broaching that subject, and uh, we're looking forward to it. Amen. And on Tuesday night, on uh, Wednesday night, we're going to continue here uh, with the cross, with our talk, our cross walking uh, sessions. Uh, once again, keeping the cross uh, first and foremost in our hearts and minds. The word of the cross, one o one. We hope that you can join us at that time. Amen. So once again, we just bless the Lord and we just thank Him. We honor Him. God bless you, Patty, uh, my brother Frank, Calvin. God bless you. Thank you for for stopping by. Uh, God bless you, uh, Bishop Brown. Thank you all for joining us. We we pray once again, as always, that your time spent uh, in God's word has been fruitful. Judith Henry, amen. God bless you, Juliana. God bless you. Thank you for joining us, amen. So we will be back here once again. As I said, we'll be back here tomorrow night, Lord willing, uh, with another Bible study for your heart and for your soul. I am Michael Jakes, and uh, thank you for joining us. And we will see you next time you're able to make it. Have a good day and God bless.